All right, friends, we have a reanalysis of the Minnesota coronary experiment. This study, I can't believe you don't know about this yet. I, I mean, I'm kind of embarrassed, to be honest, that this was published in 2016. And I'm just now diving into this because we've talked a lot about cholesterol. We've talked a lot about saturated fat. There's a lot of people out there saying that you should minimize saturated fat consumption and increase your consumption of vegetable oils because they're, they're higher in PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fats. And of course, those fats lower your cholesterol. And if you lower your cholesterol, well, of course, you're going to lower your risk of heart disease. Well, it turns out the largest randomized controlled trial to date does not support the diet heart hypothesis. And we're really gonna take a deep dive into this. I know by now you're probably bored of all this cholesterol talk, but believe me, I'm sure you've been approached by your doctor or a friend or family member that, you know, hey, hey Sally, or hey Tim, that butter and that red meat that you eat, it's gonna clog your arteries. Why don't you have the vegetable oil in the salad instead? But there's really no good evidence to suggest that reducing saturated fat consumption in your diet and swapping that for corn, soy, canola, safflower, or sunflower oil is health promoting. Now, as I mentioned, this Minnesota coronary experiment that was conducted between the years 1968 and 1972 was one of the, in my opinion, one of the best randomized controlled trials of its, of its type, of its genre, looking at how shifts in saturated fat content and replacing them with corn oil. Now, I know a lot of people aren't eating corn oil like by the bottle. They might have it in fried foods and so forth, but the average person is getting about 16 grams of corn oil per day. Now, ancient humans, I know sometimes we don't want to rom romanticize all aspects of ancient times. There was no internet, there was no cell phones. The world was more dangerous back then. But if we look at the, the longevity and the health of humans and the teeth and fertility rates, you know, back then they were, they were higher than they are now. Uh, arguably people, they did suffer from death from you know acute infections and lacerations and, uh, and things like that but uh, the chronic diseases were not as prevalent and, and we see this in unindustrialized people throughout the world they're gen generally speaking healthier because they're not consuming some of these foods now most people are getting corn oil and, and vegetable oils from junk food uh, but this study really doesn't support the idea that reducing saturated fat from animal products in the diet and swapping that with vegetable oils has any health benefits. And, and this is important because most doctors are going to say to you, if you have high total cholesterol or high LDL cholesterol, that you need to reduce your red meat consumption and reduce your saturated fat intake and have more vegetable oils. Because it turns out that in this study, they found this randomized controlled trial and they followed people for long enough uh, and had them on these dietary interventions for long enough to see whether or not there was any statistical difference between making this diet change. And they also, what's important friends, they looked at autopsies. They looked at dead people's bodies and they looked at their cerebral arteries as well as their coronary arteries at multiple different sites. And they didn't find any benefit with switching away from a saturated fat heavy diet towards more of a linoleic acid, polyunsaturated fat heavy diet from corn oil. Although cholesterol did go down, there was no benefit. In fact, they notice the opposite. So that's where we're going. We're going to look at this reanalysis of one of the largest, most important randomized controlled trials testing the diet heart hypothesis theory. So if you're enjoying what you're hearing, please hit that like button. Let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. We're gonna take a deep dive into this now because we're talking about metabolism and metabolic health. I just wanna remind you a tool that can help you support metabolic health and possibly improve and have better control over your food cravings is berberine. Berberine has been used for over 3,000 years. In my opinion, it's one of the most effective natural tools to help support metabolic health. A lot of people are taking NMN and all these esoteric uh, compounds out there. You don't see the, the dossier, the clinical research supporting those very expensive tools like you do with berberine. There's at least 17 human clinical studies finding berberine helps support metabolic health. It might help reduce waist circumference. And just practically speaking, it helps with your appetite. Most people get into problems because you're eating junk food when you shouldn't be before bed. So if you're like me and you crave cookies and crackers and pizza and ice cream before bed, try the Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. You can save with the code podcast at checkout. If you click the link below, you'll see hundreds of reviews from people just like you who are benefiting from this. If you decide to try it, use the code podcast at checkout. So getting back to this study, again, this is a reanalysis because as this study goes into, I'll, by the way, this is all going to be in the show notes. I really implore you to download this article because it talks about how data was omitted because at the time, 
the environment, because Ansel Keys' Seven Country Study and the McGovern Report, the U.S. government seemed hell-bent on advising people to eat more vegetable oils for whatever reason, because yeah, it's well known that eating more vegetable oils and cutting out saturated fat lowers your cholesterol. But a key caveat here is that doesn't necessarily reduce your risk of dying from heart disease. Yes, your cholesterol might be lower, but as you will see from these images, that doesn't reduce your risk of dying from heart disease. In fact, there was a recent paper that was published in 2024. We're not going to dive into this. This was published just this June. The title is The Effect of Reducing Saturated Fat Intake on Cardiovascular Disease in Adults, an Umbrella Review. This study echoes the reanalysis of the Minnesota coronary experiment, finding that swapping animal fat for vegetable oils, it doesn't affect your, your risk of dying. It might slightly affect your risk of having a heart attack, slightly, but it doesn't reduce your risk of dying. And some studies show the opposite. So let's dive into what's known on this topic. Excellent paper. Again, highly recommend that you uh, share this so that people hear this. Okay. What's already known here, the traditional diet heart hypothesis predicts that replacing saturated fat with vegetable oils rich in linoleic acid will reduce cardiovascular deaths by lowering serum cholesterol. This paradigm has never been causally demonstrated in a randomized controlled trial and thus has remained uncertain for over 50 years. We're getting close to 60 years, my friends. So again, we've been making these recommendations for people for 60 years without really good evidence. And that's a little bit scary if we're talking about practicing evidence-based medicine. Key findings from landmark randomized control trials, including the Sydney Heart Study, as well as the Minnesota Coronary Experiment, were not fully possible. What this study adds, though the Minnesota Coronary Experiment intervention lowered serum cholesterol, this did not translate to improved survival. Paradoxically, Minnesota Coronary Experiment participants who had greater reductions in serum cholesterol had a higher rather than lower risk of death. Let me just read that one more time in case you're not fully listening. Paradoxically, Minnesota coronary experiment participants who had greater reductions in serum cholesterol had a higher rather than lower risk of death. This is the timestamp that you should share with your friends because this is important for all the people who are still putting soy oil or corn oil or safflower oil on their salads instead of having a little bit of bacon or uh, red meat or butter, right? Results of a systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized control trials do not support for the traditional diet heart hypothesis. So sometimes in life, we have to do some unlearning. And it seems that we're kind of at the precipice of the point of unlearning when it comes to what does or doesn't increase your risk of developing cardiovascular disease. Again, we've been told over and over that high cholesterol is linked with atherosclerosis and narrowing of the arteries, and that will uh, increase your risk of having a heart attack. And one of the mediators of this process of atherosclerosis is saturated fat. But we have these randomized control trials, the Sydney Heart Experiment and the Minnesota Coronary Experiment really don't show this because this is a double blind randomized controlled trial designed to test whether replacement of saturated fat with vegetable oil rich in linoleic acid reduces coronary heart disease and death by lowering serum cholesterol. Data recovered from the Minnesota coronary experiment, unpublished documents and raw data were analyzed according to the hypotheses pre-specified by the original investigators. Unpublished documents with completed analysis for the randomized cohort of 9,423 women and men between the ages of 20 and 97, longitudinal data on serum cholesterol for the 2,355 participants exposed to the study diets for over a year and over 149 completed autopsy files. So again, this is a really big study. It went on for 35 months. And what I like about it, it's not just a randomized controlled trial and then they looked at biomarkers and said, see you later. They looked at autopsies of people who went through this one-year dietary intervention. And again, finding that serum cholesterol did in fact lower when people cut their saturated fat and increased their uh, polyunsaturated fat from corn oil, but that didn't affect outcomes. In fact, when people made this dietary change, they were more likely to die. And I'll share with you those statistics here soon. And I think this is, again, important because there was a, a very strong political environment back in the late 1960s and early 1970s with the whole, I think it was Stephen McGovern, uh, the whole McGovern report. There was a, a Senate subcommittee that really wanted to foist an agenda onto the American people. Uh, you can dive further into this with the book Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teicholz. We've had her on our show before. Uh, really interesting stuff, very deep expose into how 
there's a lot of conflicts of interest, including starting with the American Heart Association, how they endorsed vegetable oil consumption because it lowered cholesterol without looking at the unintended harms of this. And so we're really going to talk about that because I think it's important. And what this article dives into, we're going to talk about shortly, is the unintended harms of linoleic acid. I know that seed oils are controversial, and there's some people that say, well, see, this study said this, or this meta-analysis said that. Those are observational studies, basically, a, an analysis of observational studies. And we know that we can't control for all variables. The randomized controlled trials look at the direction of causality. And when we see here, when people intentionally shift one macronutrient for another, that is reduce saturated fat from animals and butter and increase consumption of canola oil, and then they have higher death rates, we need to start to look at why that might be. And these investigators talk about that which I think is really, really interesting. And they talk about the oxidation and the high susceptibility of the oxidation. Okay, so let's look at the hazard ratios here of these two studies that we've sort of been mentioning here, the Sydney Heart Study, as well as the Minnesota Coronary Experiment. And if you look here at the direction of the hazard ratios, um, most of these randomized control trials that have been published since the MCE, the Minnesota Coronary Experiment, as well as the Sydney Heart Study, uh, favor the control group, which is meaning the control group is still eating saturated fat, butter, red meat, and all that, not the intervention group or the diet group. And so you can see the hazard ratios really start to range. But the trend here is that there's not a strong connection between uh, having a diet high in polyunsaturated vegetable or seed oils and better outcomes uh, by reducing saturated fat content in the diet. And so that was unique about this paper is they not only re-examined the Minnesota coronary experiment, but they also looked at recently published randomized controlled trials where dietary interventions was part of the study. And so you don't really see uh, a strong trend in the direction of favoring the dietary intervention, meaning that you probably, by switching the saturated fat content in your diet, if you haven't yet had a heart attack, may not really improve your health. And it may, in fact, worsen your health because of what we're going to talk about shortly. Okay. They talk about how, in the study, they talk about how we're consuming a lot of linoleic acid from vegetable oils. They say individuals eating only minimally processed whole foods, as everyone did until about 100 years ago, would have consumed only about 2-3% to 3 of calories from linoleic acid. By contrast, among industrialized populations today, most linoleic acid intake is derived from highly concentrated vegetable oils, in which the fatty acids are separated from the fiber, protein, and micronutrients that are naturally present in vegetables and seeds. Because these concentrated sources of linoleic acid are used widely as cooking and frying oils and added to many processed and packaged food items, the linoleic acid content of modern industrialized diets is much higher than natural diets. For example, mean linoleic acid intake in the U.S. is about 17 grams a day, much higher than approximately 6 grams of linoleic acid per day provided by natural food diets without added vegetable oils. So I think this is really important. And as you can see here, the potential unanticipated consequences of diets enriched in these vegetable oils, particularly soy and corn oil, are possibly reduced cholesterol and therefore reduced uh, coronary heart disease risk and death. That's the traditional hypo hypothesis, but the potential unintended harms are increased rates of coronary heart disease, chronic pain, fatty liver disease, because of the oxidation of the highly susceptible linoleic acid. Now, I think that's important because we've just been foisting these vegetable oils on people and you know, I've shared with you some of the statistics and the images with regards to increased risk of death and, and so forth in the intervention group, not in the control group. And now we have the unintended consequences. And I think that's really important. And we're going to uh, talk about that because these oils, it turns out, are highly susceptible to becoming oxidized or modified. And that can lead to a downstream litany of health-related challenges. Now, I think what's even more important is why this data was not first published in this experiment because this, this experiment was published and the data was looked at and said, see, you need, everyone should, we should make these sweeping public health recommendations to decrease saturated fat content in people's diets because of all these purported health benefits. But there was data that wasn't totally published. And so these authors actually talk about why that might be. And I think that's really interesting because we see, you know, history repeats itself in unexpected ways. Now, the investigators say, well, recovery of unpublished data can alter the balance of evidence and in some instances can lead to a reversal of established policy or clinical practice positions. 
Figure 10 provides a historical context for the completion and publication of the Minnesota Coronary Experiment, as well as the Sydney Diet Heart Study, results in relation to key U.S. policy events over the past half century. It is interesting to speculate whether complete publication of randomized controlled trial results might have altered key policy decisions promoting replacement of saturated fat with linoleic acid-rich oils, such as the 1977 McGovern Report and the National Cholesterol Education Program, or contribution to shift in research priorities. So, you know, unless you've been living in a cave, uh, there was a big push by the government and the medical establishment to reduce dietary cholesterol and saturated fat. And we don't really know why. Uh, no one is implying intent here. I think there's probably a lot of money to be made in the cholesterol lowering class of drugs. Uh, you can look at the research and the statistics on that. But it seems that there's a, a intense lobbying by companies and organizations and associations that promote the use of vegetable oil consumption because it is so cheap. Most of these vegetable oils are actually a byproduct, a waste product of, of manufacturing uh, and had really no good use as a food source until they were repurposed by way of industrial processing into edible foods that were much cheaper than lard, than tallow, and butter. And so I think we really oftentimes, friends, need to follow the money. So hopefully you found some value from this video. Uh, maybe we can even do a deeper dive at some point into this other related paper that was published in June of this year. But the long and short of it, a reanalysis of the Minnesota coronary experiment, which was a double-blind randomized controlled trial looking at autopsy findings, did not support the diet heart hypothesis that reducing saturated fat in your diet and replacing that with vegetable oils, lowering cholesterol, that didn't actually improve or reduce your odds of dying. It did the opposite, as you can see from the images that we've been sharing. Death rates increased in people who were on the intervention diet, not the control diet. Now, why isn't that the headline, right? That should be the headline. Like, hey, look, we're trying to get people to eat these unnatural foods and they kind of didn't work. Maybe we should change our position, but it is hard to unlearn. I've seen your comments. Uh, I see the comments from people who really have a hard time grappling with this idea that maybe they've been told information that is inaccurate. And we now know new information by looking at this through a more objective filter. And that is free of bias because people like you watching these videos, you don't care if people consume seed oils or not. You're not the one that has a vested interest in uh, the profits that could be generated by, uh, you know, people consuming these because once people realize that these vegetable oils are the problem, that's going to be a major problem for these food companies. If you look at the ingredients of Nabisco or General Mills, whether it's cereal, crackers, cookies, uh, all the processed food from candy all the way on up, you see corn oil, cotton seed oil, you see canola oil, and you see soy oil. These things are ubiquitous in the food supply. So if all of a sudden everyone realized that these are problems, and we shouldn't be avo we should be avoiding you know, these substances. That would be a major problem for these food companies. But as you know, lobby congressmen and activists uh, and policymakers that sit on the boards and recommend you know what sort of foods you eat and what comprises a so-called healthy diet. And so we we always have to be a little bit skeptical uh, in terms of the conflicts of interest. As we talked about the American Academy of Dietetics and the, the, the certifying body that, that issues uh, certifications for all of practicing dietitians, they invest in General Mills, Nabisco, Coca-Cola, and Pepsi. So how can we really trust their recommendations when they have a clear conflict of interest? And you know, in their events where they teach people about blood sugar and stuff, they're giving out Capri Sun and Nabisco crackers and cookies. I mean, the very foods that cause the diseases that they ostensibly stand to fight against. It's really a crazy world out there, my friends. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I will put links to everything we talked about in the show notes. I'm grateful for your likes, your comments, your shares, and we'll catch you in a future video down the road.